Okay, well, uh, welcome uh, tonight. The, the fly I'm gonna tie is called the Adam's dry fly. I'm sure we've all heard of it. It's a pretty common fly. Uh, the reason I chose it is because I tied it for the tie -a this year and I've tied quite a few of them. So hopefully I can do a nice job and, and demonstrate this. I don't think it's something that anybody's never seen or heard of, but just to give a little background, uh, from what I've read in a few books, uh, there's some little bit conflicting, but it's, it's pretty much unanimous. It's this uh, tie was originally, fly was originally tied by a guy named Leonard Hopper up in Michigan. And it was a fisherman uh, named Charles Adams that was fishing a pond or a stream. We're not sure exactly. Some people say it was this Art Butis Lake near Mayfield or the Boardman River. And he brought a bug back to Halliday and said, tie me a fly. And so he tied him a fly and it, this, it was the Adams and it worked. So that was about year 1922. Some people say 1930. So give, give or take, uh, that, that was it. It's a mayfly imitation. Uh, so, you know, I've got a book on trout stream insects. You look through it, there's a lot of mayflies, right? Different sizes, different colors. So I think you could take this and uh, probably fish a lot of situations because it looks like a bug from the bottom, you know? Uh, the original uh, recipe, I'll try to show this <clears throat> on the camera if this shows, does that work okay? Yeah, do the other side, how's this? Okay, okay, anyway, at any rate, <laughs> In my mind, it worked perfectly. So uh, if you look at the original, it's pretty similar to this. The only thing different is um, they would use uh, golden pheasant tippet fibers for the tail. And they would use muskrat for the body of the fly, you know. So we're just using uh, super fine dubbing on the body and, and we're not using golden pheasant tail tippet. We're just using uh, hackle fibers. So. Uh, can be used for a lot of different uh, insect hashes, depending on what color you do it. Um, blueing olives, green drakes, uh, all those kind of things. Uh, we're just going to tie a regular dry version. You can do parachute versions, and there's another version for you people like uh, deer hair called irresistible, and the body, instead of the gray dubbing, is deer hair spun and trimmed down. Real nice, yeah. So it's a little bit chunkier and I think it rides a little higher. Obviously the uh, parachute rides a little lower in the water and probably a little easier to see from my point of view, depending on what color, you know, post you put on there. So um, let's, let's go ahead and get started and tie this thing, huh? So everybody has a kit and um, does this work if I do this? Yeah. Okay. So we're using a number 14 dry fly hook. Okay, at any rate, so it's a number 14 dry fly hook. We'll put that in the vise and um, get going. <clears throat> so we're using some gray thread, 6-0. I'm using actually 14-0 Vivas. So different ways of tying this. Some people like to tie the tail first. Some people like to tie the wing first. Um, Having done quite a few for the tie-a-thon, I like to tie the wing first because I felt like uh, getting the proportions was the difficult thing on this fly. Because if you tried to tie the tail first and then you're doing the, the body of the fly, um, it gets real tough. You start crowding the eye real easily. So here's, I'll show you how I, I started tying it. So if we just, let me get my other glasses on first. <clears throat> if you, um, just start the, the thread at the front of the hook. And one second. Start the thread at the front of the hook. And I like to work it back to about one half of the shank of the hook, okay? So, you know, if you're going from here to here, here to here, that's about the one half mark. So I was just putting the thread to there, holding that up then work the thread back up and it's kind of easy to find where's a half of a half, right? So that's about the three quarters up the shank of the hook. So that's where I'm going to tie in. Okay. 
top or lights that work properly? So that's the three quarter point, and that's where we're going to tie in our wing, okay? So in your bag, there should be uh, two wing feathers about this size, okay? Give or take, you know, I couldn't find perfect ones for everybody, but well, it'll, it'll work no matter what. So if you take the wing, it comes off, you know, something like this. Obviously, the smaller ones are down here, the bigger ones are up here. And um, what you want to do is get two about the same size and match the tips up, okay? If you get the tips to match up and you want the shiny sides facing each other, and then they kind of splay apart if you hold them in your hand. Has everybody got that? So to get the wings on there correctly, you're gonna hold the wings from the back facing the front of the hook, okay? Then we wanna make the wings about the size of the shank of the hook up to about the length of the hook. So to do that, the best way I found it is like, I have it in my hand, you know, the wings are splayed apart, put it where I want it, grab it here where I wanna, um, the length of the, the wings, pinch it pretty hard with your right hand for right-handed tires, and just kind of peel those fibers back, okay? That may be a hair long. I'll just go a little bit more if I can. And the important part about getting that kind of peeled back is you'll see all those little stray fibers, you know, that want to come off there. So if you can get those peeled back as, as far back as possible, and then we're going to tie it in at that point. So right there, I'm going to set it at my tie-in point. Do kind of a loose wrap over it once, twice, maybe three times. And then I'm going to kind of work it backwards towards the back of the hook to get it tied in well. So then cut that off. Clean it up a little bit. Got some stray fibers, of course. You can kind of clean it up, but the dubbing is going to go over it too. So then just work your thread back up to the tie in point. Just try not to crowd it too far forward. <clears throat> Once we get to that point, you're going to lift up on the wing. Try to get a hold of all of it, pull it back. Build up a thread dam right in front of that. Several wraps to try to get that wing to stand up. Okay, that's pretty good. I almost overdid it there. So at this point, the wings are right up against each other. So we need to try to split those apart a little bit. So I'm going to take my uh, bodkin here a little bit and help it. But also just go up in between. And then the same way, the other way, like an X wrap. Okay, so. So then I've got the wings kind of splayed apart there and pretty much straight up and down. You can see how they're splayed apart. Are we doing okay? Can you rewind that? Yeah, I just. <laughs> yeah, I can take the thread back off yeah. at home. Yeah. So I'm going to clean up a little bit here, just get some of the, the straight fibers off here. If you do it perfectly, probably not going to have any straight fibers, but that's always hard to do. That's another thing I learned, you know, sometimes you're doing this, if you don't get the wing right, just take it off and scrap it and get a new one. So, right. So then just go ahead and work your thread back, put a thread base to the back, right at the bend, right at the bend of the hook, right about there. And this is where we're going to tie in the tail. The tail usually is a combination of grizzly and brown hackle feathers, and you want to use kind of these long, straightish feather. Uh, hackle fibers here. 
In our case, we're just going to use the brown ones. Couldn't find a lot of good uh, grizzly. So you want to just take them, grab a bunch about like this, pull down, just try to keep them straight in your hand, transfer it over so they're all even, right? How many is it? I don't know. <clears throat> Want you want just you're know, right above the downy part, you know, where the real more straight, like here's the downy ones, and, yeah. and then you want like the straight ones above it that are more rigid, you know, because yeah. then it makes it a, a nice tail. Like you can see, those are real nice rigid fibers for the tail. <clears throat> so, once again, you know, usually uh, to be authentic, you want to have the grizzly and the brown. So we're just going to use the brown. This is kind of a grizzly brown uh fiber and once again you're going to measure it about the length of a hook or a length of a shank so just kind of get that to the right length transfer it to your other hand lay it in between the two wings and try to just take a nice soft wrap over the top a couple wraps over the top just to get that going and um i just went ahead and wrapped it up the uh, shank of the hook to about my where my um, wing was tied in. Then I just would lift these off just to kind of keep the underbody kind of even. Just go in there and snip that off. And then you can flatten that down a bit. So it made the underbody a little bit more even. And just go ahead and take this thread back, not quite all the way to the end. I think that's an important part too is if you take the thread all the way to the end to put your dubbing on, it's going to make kind of a big blob at the end and it won't make the, make the shape of the, the body quite right. <clears throat> so, we need to wait a minute or yeah, right, let's catch up. Anybody have any questions at this point though? What did we discover to be the Size range of those flies that you typically. Well, some people say 16, some people say 14. Um, the question was <laughs> to the viewers at home on Zoom the question was, what do we find as the useful size for this fly fishing? So the size range is quite large, actually, from what, what I've read. You know, you can be very large, like for an eight or something for like a green drag, but then on up to maybe 20 even for some of the really smaller mayflies. But the typical, I think, is about a 14 or a 16. Um, I've only fished it a few times and um, had luck with about a 12, 14, 16 range. And um, we fished it on Colorado on actually a double fly, double, double dry rig like a bigger one in front and a smaller one in back. And, you know, sometimes they would take the big one. Sometimes they would take the small one, you know, so I'm not sure how critical it is. I guess it depends on the hatch, that kind of thing and where you're fishing. The pattern um, is obviously translated to a lot of other patterns that, uh, out east is going to be a lighter color fly probably, and out west, lighter. Uh, out west will be a darker color fly in general. Um, any other questions? Okay, so for the body of the fly, the abdomen, we're going to use some uh, super fine gray and it's obviously a uh, popular fly. It has its own Adams gray dubbing. One thing I've learned from, uh, I think, watching Kelly Gallup about dubbing is you don't want to take a big blob of dubbing. You want to have enough when you pull the dubbing apart that it just kind of floats in the air. You know, it doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't just like drop straight down. It kind of floats around, you know. It's wispy, you know, like that. So you can use uh, dubbing wax if you wish. I, I'm not going to today, but I'll see if I can get it to stick on there. Um, so just go ahead and uh, make a very thin noodle, probably a couple inches long. I might have too much here, but we'll see how it goes. So 
So like I said, we start the thread a little bit in front of the tail. <clears throat> so when we're ready to start the tail, you can start working the thread backwards and then you get the very finest little bit of dubbing right there at the tail. And then you start working forward. And that way it'll make the correct shape because this isn't real, really a chunky fly. And yeah, we just kind of keep working forward. It should get a little larger. That's a little chunky there. Getting a little larger as we go forward. And we don't want to crowd the, the wings either, okay? So I'm going to try to stop it right about there. And so we've, we're stopping the dubbing a little bit. So I have a little gap behind the wing. And then I have a gap in front of the wing. So when we're tying the, the hackle, there's going to be a grizzly and a brown hackle tied in. And we're going to just wrap it around the hook shank. So obviously, you can use a hackle gauge if you want. Um, so I've given you each a piece of hackle that's hopefully fairly close. It might be a little large, might be a little small. I don't know exactly how yours is going to line up. I don't think it's that critical. Probably if it's a little large, it's probably going to be okay too, you know. So uh, one of the things that um, when you're tying in the hackle, I think is a real critical part to this is, can, can you see that okay? I hear? No, 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 it's hard to do with uh, without resting it. So you can see <clears throat> that I've trimmed. One second. I've trimmed more off of the top side than I have the bottom side. So I'm gonna tie it in here. And by having that top side more bare, it's gonna allow it, the feather to start wrapping around there more properly. So <clears throat> with the but, shine. Question. All right. How long is your average? I've got one here that's about four inches long. I don't wanna tie all that in. No, no, well, you just- Two inches? So the question is how much hackle to tie in. You're, you're not gonna need much. We're gonna do about four to five wraps around it. It's just maybe easier leaving it long so you can wrap it around with your fingers or using your hackle pliers. So we'll go ahead, like I said, just lay it next to that area behind the wing. Put a couple wraps. You're tying it on the uh, tighter side or the other uh, side? Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm taking with with the more bare side up and I'm putting the feather on my side. And the shiny side facing me or away? Away. away. No. So the, if the shiny side is away, when you go to, to wrap this, it's going to stand it up more and lean it more forward. If you do it the other way, then the, the, the fibers are going to lay backwards more. That's all. So I'm not sure what one way or another is right or wrong. So then we're gonna do the same thing to the brown hackle. Wrap them together. Uh, we're gonna wrap them separately, but we're gonna tie them in at the same time.
So I've done the same thing with the brown. Uh, let's see. So once again, there's a little bit more off the upper than the lower. So I'm just going to lay this right on top of the grizzly and do the exact same thing. Just tie it in. Just put a couple wraps around it behind the wing. And then I'm going to go forward and capture the rest of that in front of the wing. So both of those are captured pretty well. I've got a little overhang here, so I'm going to trim this piece off. How are we doing with that, guys? Any questions? Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is take the brown hackle first. So to get this to lay down a little better, I'm just gonna pull forward on it. That kind of allows those fibers to, to loosen up a little bit. And then, so I'm pulling forward in between the two wings. And then I'm gonna take it and then just start winding around like one or two wraps behind the wing. There's one, there's two behind. Then I'm gonna pull back on the wing, try to go right in front of it, one, two. And then I'm gonna capture it with one or two wraps Then pull back on all those fibers. And try to lay down a couple pieces or a couple wraps of thread there. Trim out the brown. And we'll clean it all up at the end, at the, at the head of the fly. <clears throat> so same thing with the grizzly. Pull it forward, get it going the right way here. Try to weave it through, if you can, a little bit of the other one so you're not mashing down or trapping too many fibers. So there's one behind, there's two behind. I might do one more behind, three. And then go in front, so pull the wings back a little. One, two, go ahead and go three, I guess. Capture the hackle. So then I've got a capture, then I can push it back. You can take a you can take a half hitch tool sometimes or something like that and help push everything back a little bit. The thing going backwards. And a couple wraps in front of it, just to lock everything in. <clears throat> Trim out that one. So just kind of straighten up those wings a bit if we can. And I'm going to clean up a little bit back here. I have a few fibers hanging off the back that I don't really like the way those look. Not sure it matters, but so there's a couple ways of finishing it. You can try to whip finish. Um, I found it was kind of hard to whip finish on this down eye hook. Um, so I kind of like the half hitch tool, just going in there and you can press those back a little bit and it helps push everything back away from the eye of the hook and seat that. Another one is if you guys have these uh, bobbins, right bobbins with the half hitch tool, if you've never done it, it's pretty easy. You just lay two fingers on there, go over the top, come back through. And there's your half hitch, just slid right off of there. So then we can just trim the thread. So and you can add a little bit of head cement or super glue or whatever. Sally Hansen or whatever you like for the head. But um, that's basically it.
Does anybody have any other questions or where are we on that process here? Anything I can? So the question was, do you want to trim any of the fibers off of the bottom? You're talking about down here is what you're saying? I don't think so because you want this thing to ride kind of high in the water, okay? Um, I don't think it's going to batter, bother a hookup at all. So that, by having those on there, is going to help it ride a little higher in the water. Fred. How would you treat this fly when you fish it? Well, I treat it. So the question was, how would you treat this fly when you fish it? Well, I would, I would treat it with some floatant. Yeah, uh, it depends on what you like. You know, um, high and dry, or uh, what do you like? Shake and bake. That they, you know, back stuff or whatever. Okay. Dry dust. Dry dust. Dry dust. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know, I mean, it's going to be a little bit buoyant, but it's going to need some help, you know. Yeah. Dink. Yeah. Hey, Steve, do you have a question online? Okay. Why wrap separately versus wrap together? So I, for me, it was just, uh, I could do a little neater job of wrapping them separately. I, I think you could, if you're good at it, you could, you could grab it with your hackle pliers together and do it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I don't think it matters one way or the other. I like to take a lot longer to do it, you know. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, that hackle's probably a little big, and my wings are probably a little big, but. Looks very buggy, though. Right? And from the bottom, have a question? Did you ever uh, cut the uh, hackle on the bottom to have it ride lower? So the question is, uh, do you ever cut the hackle on the bottom to let it ride lower? I guess you could. I've not done it. I, I think uh, if you wanted to be more of an emerger type pattern, yeah, you could do that. Yeah. But you probably Yeah. Yeah, the problem is, uh, so what was said was, if you cut the bottom hackle off, it might not float. So I think if you wanted to have one that sank a little, that sat a little lower, you'd try a parachute version where the hackle spins around the post. So the body would sit down in the water like here instead of here, yeah. So I've got some up here too, if you wanna see a parachute. Well, so a parachute's like this. So the parachute version, you know, there's really no, well, mine got bent from my fly box, but basically there's no hackle below. So it's gonna float right in the surface film of the water. Go ahead, Fred. I would say too that after you caught your third or fourth fish it, it gets even nicer. Yeah, so Fred was saying that after you caught your third or fourth fish was that it, it's gonna be even nicer. <laughs> it's gonna be chewed on, right? For sure. Yeah, when they start coming loose, that's when they start get fishing good, right? So I'd like to comment on yep. uh, your technique tonight. Okay. Uh, why product of what you would call simulated commercial time? And Steve discovered that wanting to control the proportions and maybe after his presentation, he came up with a solution to an age old problem we all have. Right. And I think it was brilliant and it made the fly no more difficult to tie. And the hardest thing for people to do with this fly is to set the wing strip. And if you can do that on a bare shank, 
and start over with the next step. Right. And it's, it's a very, very good uh, deviation from the yeah, because I was, when I was tying these for the tie-a-thon, I was, you know, I first I took one and I tried to put a mark on it, you know, like a marker on it. I was trying to hold it up to it. Like, this just does not work. So I just thought, okay, I'm going to go to one-fourth mark. So it's way easier to go, just eyeball. Well, there's half, half, okay? And then I'm going to go back half of that, let it hang, and you're done. You're ready to go. Yeah. And you can prepare your wing, which is really truly the most difficult thing. Yeah. yeah you set your margin for your eye, mm -hmm. which is critical. Right. You build the back and move your back. Then you have room to tie the fly off and the feathers are falling off. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, very, very easy to not have enough room at the front for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, a lot of you'll watch videos online, people tie the start from the back and just work forward and uh, never works out for me very well. And if you think about it, this technique that you just showed us tonight will work on numerous like that. Right. Anything, right. Anything pretty much will be done. Right. You can do this. Yeah. And it's food for thought. You should really consider it because it leaves you with a much better work surface. Same with the posts, you know, when you're when you're doing the post, tie the post. Um, So if you're doing this fly with the, the parachute, you know, you tie the, just take the, okay, I guess I'll, I'll use this. It's not the best, but it'll work. That's calf tail. This is calf tail, right? It's actually using the heart stuff. This is actually EP fiber. <laughs> but, um, so if I took that hook that I just prepared a minute ago, let's back it up here and start over. Okay. So once again, I start this, try to figure out where my post is gonna go. There's the halfway point, come back forward, trim it, and if you wanna do, and what did you find for thread that you really like? This is Vivas 14.0. Okay. It's not slippery. You like it. It lays flat. It does what you want. Yeah, it's pretty small. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. So if you wanted to do, um, this is not the greatest, okay? But um, I'll try to demonstrate. So if you're doing a post with this, easiest way, just go right at that tie-in point. Couple wraps, lift it up, put a wrap in front, maybe a wrap behind, then just start posting up, right? Post up. There you have it, you know. Very clean, not a lot of bulk. You don't have that big bump in the back of the wing. Right. And you can leave it long until you tie your hackle on there, you know. No. You could wrap it under it, but it makes it bulky on the bottom. So I think it's better to tie it just on top like that. You've got a lot of thread around that thing. You know. So then I would go ahead and probably tie the tail, then the body, and then I would do the, you know, tie in the, the hackle, go up and down, tie it off, done, you know. So, okay. <laughs> All right. So have you guys ever tried uh, a double fly, double dry rig? Yeah. The question I have for you is, 
How do you attach the second line? Do you attach it to the bend of the hook? Yeah. Just a clinch knot? Clinch knot, yep. Can you go with a smaller tippet? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the bigger one and then a smaller one, you know. 18, 24 inches. Yeah. So big, slow, over eight. Yeah. <laughs> Don't beat it. <laughs> yeah. But where we were fishing, like in Colorado, it was more like you flick it up, let it, you know, kind of. Follow down, roll just cast. lay it right back up, roll cast it right back up. So it wasn't not like you're trying to do a bunch of fancy uh, river runs through it, casting, you know. Yeah. We're not doing it, we weren't doing that. Typically, the dropper was like 18. 18, probably. And we were using a little bigger, probably a 12, I think. I don't know exactly, but sure. give or take there, yeah. They're both floating. They're both floating, yeah. To double dry. And I assume you would cycle Yeah. So I think we would put like a uh, like a parachute on one of them just so you could see it a little better. Yeah. And maybe the back one was a smaller. Yeah. Very helpful when you're hit 22. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see for sure. But when you're fishing like that, it's kind of a, a tight line fishing anyway. Yeah. So it's not like you're trying to set a hook with a lot of line out, you know. Just a little bit of fly line and mostly uh, leader and tippet. So. Pardon me? Were you fishing that way with a double drag from my boat? Walking, yeah. Waiting. Mm -hmm. I've done it on a bat on an Arkansas River. And you hear this combat fishing, you know, boom, boom, boom. It's like, Right. They either take it or they don't take it. Right. Yeah. Next customer, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying is uh, for people at home that uh, where what river were you on? It was the Arkansas River. The Arkansas River rafting. It was kind of a a boom, boom, boom. You just lift it up, cast it to the next spot, cast it to the next spot. You're working the foam line. Exactly. Yeah. Anybody else uh, fish this much? Uh, I, I try. <laughs> but anyway, I was just going to say that, uh, yeah, I, I, I've done that too. But what I thought about doing, I, I didn't do it though, was putting like a little monochrome of ink. And uh, underneath the tail, and, and you know, and, and then just tying it directly to that, to that little loop. You could do that. That'd be another another step in the whole process, though. Whole process, right? yeah. I, I, I was having a little bit, especially in small ponds, I, I have trouble sometimes, uh, you know, uh, attaching the tip of to the bend of the, to the bend of the hook. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. That's why uh, got to have magnifying glasses. Right? <laughs> Good. Strong light. Strong light and good eyes, I guess, and being able to spin that around, you know, you watch these guides do it sometimes, they can just do it with them talking to you and just, oh yeah, yeah, for me, it's a little slower process, for sure. You do a thousand a week, you can do that. Yeah, you can get good at that, for sure, especially when you hang half of them in the tree, you know, <laughs> we tear the whole rig out at one time, right, yeah, good. Well, thanks, guys. There's a couple extra kids there if anybody else wants to take a few. Um, well, good job, Steve. Thanks, guys. Good job.